Yes, Mr. President, if I could follow up on the uh, question about uh, your comments uh, with Vladimir Putin about sure. Russian meddling. Uh, you did seem to be joking there uh, with the Russian president. Are we taking that to be wrong? And no. what is it with your coziness with some of these dictators and autocrats at these summits? Uh, with Mohammed bin Salman, the, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, when you were asked about the case of Jamal Khashoggi, uh, you did not respond to that question in front of the, the Saudi Crown Prince. I don't know that anybody were you asked me. Afraid of, uh, are, yeah. Were you afraid of offending him on that subject? No, not at all. I don't really care about offending people. I sort of thought you'd know that. <laughs> uh, well, you passed up an opportunity And there. by the way, congratulations. I understand your book. Is it doing well? It's doing very well, Mr. President. Really? Thank you. I'll, I'll get you an autographed oh, copy. Good. If you Send like it. I want to see it. Yes, sir. Yes. Send me a copy. Uh, no, uh, I get along with everybody. Except you people, actually. I get along with uh, a lot of people. Uh, I have a tremendous relationship with President Xi. Nobody else would have the deal that we have. We're getting tens of, mi of billions of dollars from China coming in. A lot of things are happening. And despite that, we're moving along towards something that could be very historic. But I get along with President Putin. I get along with Mohammed from uh, Saudi Arabia. Look. Uh, I spoke to Saudi Arabia when the oil prices a year ago were getting very high. And I wasn't so nice. And I said, you got to get some more oil into the system because what's happening is no good. And they did. And people are driving at, you know, very low numbers right now. You haven't seen in the old days, you'd have spikes where the gasoline went to $5 and more. And it wasn't so, wasn't so good. Uh, but I also get along with people that would be perceived as being very nice. You have a lot of very nice leaders of countries. Uh, I was with, uh, I was with, wait a minute, I was with Prime Minister May today. I was with so many. You take a look, new head of Australia, look at Japan. Abe, Prime Minister Abe is a fine, they're all fine as far as I'm concerned. Some are stronger than others, some are tougher than others. And a Mr. lot President, of people. If I, if I, but if I may though, Mr. President, on the case of Jamal Khashoggi, we have a lot of journalists in this room who object to what appears to be the Saudi government's complicity and perhaps orchestration of the assassination and dismembering of a journalist. Yeah. And when you were given the opportunity to call Mohammed bin Salman out on that, you did not do it. Did you do it privately? So, and do you, do you agree that it is despicable for a government to kill a journalist in that fashion? Yes, I do. I think it's horrible. Or anybody else, by the way. Yeah. But I think it's horrible. Uh, and if you look and look into Saudi Arabia, you see what's happening. 13 people or so have been prosecuted. Uh, others are being prosecuted. They've taken it very, very seriously. And uh, they will continue to. And I've let everybody know I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm very unhappy about that whole event. But uh, if you look at what's going on, and right now within Saudi Arabia, they're prosecuting additional people. Uh, there's a lot of things happening. At the same time, I will also say, and nobody said, nobody so far has pointed directly a finger at the future king of Saudi Arabia. I will say, I spoke to his father, Jim, I spoke to his father at great length. Um, they've been a terrific ally. They're creating millions of jobs in this country. They're ordering equipment, not only military equipment, but $400 billion worth of, and actually even more than that over a period of time, uh, worth of different things. And with that being said, I'm extremely angry and unhappy about a thing like that taking place. But as of this moment, uh, more than 13 people are being prosecuted, and I hear the number's going to be going up, but it's a good question. If you were wondering the depths of Trump's pettiness, it's him responding to a very valid question about his coziness with the world's autocrats and dictators, and responding by trying to paint Jim Acosta as an opportunist. He deflects the CNN journalist's question and asks how Jim's book is doing, as if writing a book is somehow disqualifying. And that's absurd considering A, Trump touts books from his own sycophants on a weekly basis, and B, journalists 
write books. But more importantly, he defends his relationship with autocrats and dictators, presenting it like it's a good thing that he gets along with a lot of people. And if he was running for prom king, I'd be totally on board. But this isn't a popularity contest. And you don't get extra points for being friends with the most people. You get points for representing the ideals of this country, which Saudi Arabia's MBS and Russia's Vladimir Putin fall far short of doing. Trump claims that nobody has pointed a finger at Mohammed bin Salman for the killing of Jamal Khashoggi, but that's a lie. Jim Acosta himself took to Twitter after the exchange and tweeted that a UN report found credible evidence that MBS and others were responsible for the killing, which is true. The 100-page report called Khashoggi's killing an international crime, reading, it is the conclusion of the special rapporteur that Mr. Khashoggi has been the victim of a deliberate, premeditated execution, an extrajudicial killing for which the state of Saudi Arabia is responsible under the international human rights law. And look, Bin Salman's role in this was never in doubt, even for Trump, I'm sure. But this isn't about human rights, it's about money, period. Trump suggests in broad daylight that these crimes are permissible because Saudi Arabia buys weapons from us. In other words, for Trump, the killing of a US permanent resident was just the price of doing business. And sure, he makes a tepid attempt to proclaim just how angry he is. With that being said, I'm extremely angry and unhappy about a thing like that taking place. But nothing quite says angry like literally doing nothing about it. And the same goes for Putin. During the G20 summit, when given the opportunity to confront Putin on election meddling in 2020, Trump all but nudged him with his elbow and winked for the cameras. Because that should get the message across. Maybe if we wanted Trump to get tougher on a country committing cyber attacks against us, we should have told him it was an ally that did it, since those seem to be the only people he's willing to be a tough guy with. And look, clearly the last thing that Trump wants is for Russia not to meddle in the election, because nothing about his administration or the Republican Party is about defending democracy, it's all about tightening their grip on power by any means necessary. So Trump can try to deflect from Acosta's valid questions and claim that he's totally, definitely against all these dictators and autocrats but his actions speak far louder than words. And what they say is that he has more in common with them than not.